You're not going to believe it. There's the head. Where? Right underneath my hook. There he is. On this week's Bondi Vet Top 5. You are not going to believe what it is. Holy hell. If she really is seven metres long, she's the biggest scrub python ever recorded. Trying, number five. That is uh, responsible for a number of bites each year and very capable of killing a person. They have uh, neurotoxins that effectively put your body into paralysis and you will die. Number eight, most toxic snake in the world. Yep. Yeah. So You're we mad. won't be picking them up anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> I hope not. He picks them up, which I don't like and then drives them away. I don't like it because if he gets bitten, I've got to get him to a hospital and it's an hour's drive. You've got thongs on, so yes. please stay there and you're not allowed to catch it. That's no. right, so you're not allowed to catch it. <laughs> You've got eyes on him. Yes. <laughs> the easiest thing's just to do this. They're near impossible to spot. Maybe I need my glasses on. That's perfect for them. That's what they love, these banks here leaves. I get nervous looking for adders. The adder's somewhere. And you can't see No, it. you don't know where it is. A death adder doesn't have the ability to take off very quickly like we assume most snakes do. They're short and stocky. They, they, they can't just crawl away. He's going to hold his position. He thinks he's camouflaged. If your hand goes too close, you're bitten. See it? No, he's here somewhere. The death adder knows we're here. He can sense us. He would have known we're here from the moment we started to walk down this track. But he's going to hold tight. Please be careful. Yeah, I will. It looks like it's yeah, gone to me. No, he'll be there. They're just perfect. They, they camouflage so well. OK, I've spotted him. Just stay there. Yep. You're not going to believe it. There's the head. Where? Right underneath my hook. There he is. There's the head. See? Yep. Yeah. You know, they've got one of the fastest strikes of any snake on Earth. Mm. I'll bring him out on the flat there and we can have a look at his tail. That's amazing. There we go. I hope that Gav and Des get something out of this too, and not just that the snake's gone, but that Gav stops picking them up. Des keeps an eye on him and she's careful in the garden because 99 times out of 100 people are bitten by catching the snake, poking the snake or trying to move it. It's not the person that leaves it alone that gets bitten. Would you like to give him a name? Oh, just Buckety, I suppose. Buckety? Yeah. Buckety the death adder. Yeah. <laughs> Our little death adder, Buckety, is going to come back with me. Uh, he'll begin a process there where we milk him fortnightly to extract his venom. We'll send that off to be made into any venom and he'll help save a life. This is it, Buckety. 250 new mates. Buckety the Death Adder is about to meet his new housemates. In these three rooms, we have 250 of the world's most toxic snakes. King Browns, Taipans, Tiger Snakes. And we milk them, we extract their venom. We send that off to be made into any venom and we save lives. But before Buckety moves in, Tim must milk the lethal snake. This is the dangerous part. You need absolute concentration, absolute focus. One slip up and you're bitten. bitten. Oh, look at that. Good boy. As soon as Buckety sees that vial, I think he thought it was my arm and it was just a grab. Look at that. That's enough in there to kill a couple of grown men. It takes at least dozens of milkings to make one vial of any venom. If you were bitten by a death adder, you might need 10 vials of any venom to recover. That's a hell of a bite. I'm glad that's not me. What happens from here is we actually freeze dry this venom and we send it off to the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories. They turn it into any venom. This is our job done. Off you come, mate. You got a bit of attitude. Buckety will now be a permanent part of the park's venom production unit and will be milked once a fortnight. Australia has 10 out of 10 of the most toxic land snakes on Earth. We have 2,000 bites every year, 300 of which receive any venom. Can you imagine how many people could die if this place didn't exist? Sleep tight, mate. You did a good job today. Number four. Hello. Hello. What's going on? 
We have got the ugliest spider. Well, <laughs> so slim, he screamed like you a girl. You should have seen it, it was massive. Heavy. It's, just, it's just started behind the TV, just there. With a scary intruder on the loose, Kirsty and Salim are worried about the safety of their young children, Tilly and Mae. The fear of having spiders in the house would be the, how venomous they are, how deadly they are. They could bite us and t potentially kill us. So how big are we talking? I it was pretty big. I was about that big. Tarantula! <laughs> well, it seemed that big when I was scurrying across there. Right, uh. Salim says it was decent size, which means it's probably not going to climb up a wall. It's going to be a ground spider. But, you know, there are lots of big black spiders, and it could be any one of ten species. The most dangerous culprit would be a redback or a deadly funnel web. The plan of attack is to just have a look peripherally because we've got two little kids running around. Now, I could be looking in one spot. I don't want a spider popping out in another spot uh, and getting someone on the toe. So you haven't seen it for 20 minutes, eh? Hey? Yeah, 20 minutes. Just hang back from there a little bit, girls, in case there's something behind there. I am not impressed that we have a spider loose in our house. The thing that scares me is that the kids might get bitten, so this is a little bit worrying. Yeah. Come on down. Have you found it? No. Nope. Not yet. Wait. Nothing under the sofa. Little bit of dust, little bit of mess. That's normal, but no spider. Let's just have a look in here. Yep, just watch your fingers there, mate. Yeah. Little bit. It's pretty just heavy. Just slider. Till hop up on the couch. I'm getting on the couch too. Casey runs out. In behind the TV cabinet, I can see a lot of cords, that's standard. But then one leg pops out. Kirst, you are not going to believe what it is. Holy hell. Tilly, just watch out there, darling. I did not expect to find a funnel web spider inside my friend's house. The world's deadliest spider. Just hang back there because he might come under. There's a spider that ran across right there where the kids are. Yep. The TVs, that's unbelievable. People have died in 75 minutes after being bitten by a funnel web. Now for little kids, they're smaller, and that can happen quicker. That's really scary. The pressure is now on Tim to catch the deadly intruder. Hey, watch in case. Whoa, 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 hold on, he's on the floor, guys. Take that, mate. Oh, he's moving, he's moving. Where is he? Funnel webs are not only venomous, they're very aggressive. Big fangs. When they're cornered or they feel threatened, they just rear up, show you their fangs, and ready to bite. Oh, no, hold on. Here he is. I do, but he's back. He's on the wall. He's not easy to catch, is he? Nope. Come on, little buddy. Here you go. Got him. Did you really? Look at this. Yeah. He's all right, mate. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, look at that. Look, mate. He's all right now that he's in here. So, Kirst, I wish I could have told you it's. Not to worry about, but that is a funnel web spider and a male, the deadliest spider on earth. Oh my goodness. This is every parent's worst nightmare, but Tim has even more bad news. Do you know why I think he's in your house? Why? He's looking for a girl. Yeah, right. So you're so likely to have. Potentially, there could be a another... girl. You're likely to have some girls around. Um, the boys, you know, this weather warms up a little bit, they go out in search of females, and, uh, and that's what you end up with. My heart's beating. The last thing I want to find is another funnel web lurking around our household. Want to look under the dishwasher? At a family home in suburban Sydney, Tim is still on the hunt for more deadly funnel web spiders. Well, I'm pretty happy inside. So, uh, how about if we have a look outside yep. and see where your little mate might have come from? Yep, all right. My worry now is that I've found a male inside. They've also got a backyard and there could be spiders out there. It's the right time of year, it's warming up. I think I should investigate a little bit more. Okay. Come on, follow me. And just see if I can identify any areas the girls shouldn't go, or potential spots there are more spiders. So I'm just gonna have a look around, yep. and just see, the, the yard's perfect for them. It's wet, it's cold, damp, yeah. spider heaven. Look, you found, found a hole. hole. Eagle eyes, Maeve, she's onto something straight away. Well, that's a good home, it goes a long way. It's a perfect spider home, but nobody's here today, so I keep moving. Let's have a look down here. So I'm digging around, using my spoon, and there's a big plant pot that's on its side. I flip it over, and lo and behold, there is our second funnel web. That's 
incredible. Oh my goodness. Teal, look at this. Oh. And we'll just be a little more careful with this one because it doesn't have the clips. Is it a so female? This is a big female. Oh no. So Tim's found another spider in our garden where my girls play and I'm not happy about this. You know why they're so dangerous? Because of those really big fangs. Now I'm going to take the spiders inside because I don't want the girls growing up scared of spiders. I want them to develop a healthy respect. Oh. Are they quite aggressive? They, they're super aggressive. <laughs> oh. So this is why funnel webs are so famous. They're not afraid to bite. They rear up like this, and you know what he's doing right now? Showing you his fangs. Looks like something's coming out of it. That's venom. There you so go. So really aggressive. There's like no a little droplet on. That's right. There's no chance if this spider bites you that you're not going to receive venom. He's already got it on there, ready to rock and roll. The fangs are huge, and even to see a bit of venom coming out of them, very very scary stuff. She's on the move now, so I'm going to put her back in here. There we go. Lid on. We caught a spider. Wow. Thanks, Timmy. I've got two spiders here today, but only the male can be used for the anti-venom program because he's five times more venomous than the female. That's the one we need. Thank you very much. Ah, good on you, mate. mate. Thank you. Till? Thanks, Tim. I think we called the right person. You give me a shake. Thank you. Yeah. No, you did. Hit me. See you, Kirst. See ya. This week's number three. How are you going? Hi Chris. Must be Pam. It is Pam. Thank you so much for coming. I'd That's really all right. like you to have a look and see if that snake I'm, is still there. I'm going to say I'm looking forward to seeing it myself. A snake was discovered when Pam was having a I swim with her grandchildren. Just as we we're about to leave, Sophia looked over and just near the skimmer box there, yep. she said, Nana, what's that thing? And I looked over and I thought, oh, that looks like a frog. And then I looked closer and I thought, no, no, it's a snake's head. Why would he come in the water? Good question. First of all, it, it's quite hot, so yes. he could be quite dehydrated. The other thing is that um, he could be trying to shed his skin. Right. If it looks like I'm really taking my time here, I am, and there's a very good reason for that. I'm still not convinced as to what sort of snake we're dealing with here. There are two main possibilities. First of all, a diamond python, which is what I'm hoping for. The second possibility is a broad-headed snake. They're venomous. They look very similar. They're a little bit shorter, but people have died through confusing a broad-headed snake for a diamond python. I don't really want to be one of them. We're going to grab it here, mm -hmm. and then I'll move my hand in there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get control of the snake's head there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you can use it, that bag as protection if you like. It'll go in there, and then away. Right. It might move a little bit more than that. Ah! Let's go. Got to be brave. Okay. Chris and Pam now need to determine whether the reptile that's taken up residence in the pool is a non-venomous python or a deadly broad-headed snake. Is it looking more like a python? Yeah, it looks more like a python to me. Going on the markings and the length, he's got to be a diamond python. It's good news, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of snake here to deal with. Oh, Chris. Wow. Wow. Can you grab it by your prong? Chris the vet, you've got to win here. It's far from ideal, but the one thing I do have on my side is Pam support in my ear from a good metre away, which is nice. I'm brave here. <laughs> do you need me for anything? Oh, there he is. Quick, can you grab him? <gasps> oh, come on, jeez, he's fast too. I'm going to grip it in. This bag won't stay open. I just can't believe how big he is. He's just slippery. Ah! He's slippery, that's the thing, isn't it? That's the problem. Just stay there. Oh, no, no, don't do it. <sighs> Stay still, come on. Had him too. Chris. Well done, Pam. Oh. <sighs> I thought that'd be easier. I really did. I was wondering when you were going to fall in the pool, actually. 
Oh goodness, look at that. The reason he's in your pool yeah. is because he's trying to soften up his skin right. to lose it. Well, I didn't think we'd have to go to the point where you had to hold the bag. No, I did. You did it, you did it very well. I did it! I have something to tell my grandchildren. <laughs> I think they're going to be very impressed. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to hit the road. All right. Did you want a little kiss before? Oh, I'd love it. Oh, no, 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 I'd rather have a kiss of you. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Not You're the snake. very good. You can take the snake away. <laughs> Mate, find it a good home. I will, don't worry. Chris has found a new home for the feisty python he captured in a swimming pool after a titanic struggle. Hello. Oh, can we, can we talk about this? I think he's trying to tell me it's probably time. The skin's just sliding off. It looks good. Number two. I don't know how I'm going to get him out. Come on. Oh, every time I pull and then I relax, he takes back what I've got. At a family home next to the Australian Reptile Park, oh. Tim is struggling to rescue an obstinate diamond python which has firmly wedged itself in a drain pipe. Yeah, we wanted this diamond python move, you know, hopefully into the, the bush, so then it can't hurt our chickens, or we've also got dogs too, that we don't want the dogs to, like, get the snake either, so hopefully we'll get him out and he'll be right. Come on, Come get that on. Snake out. I'm trying, guys. Look at it wrapped up around Tim's arm. I'm struggling. I'm in full sun. My arms are starting to shake. I can see sweat dripping off my nose. Here, Tim, may as well get comfy. Hey, thank you. Ta, ta. Oh, that's better. My arms are, are shaky and sore. Oh, I'm no good. After more than 10 minutes, Tim is losing the battle to get the trapped snake out. Really, I might get you to run over to the park. Yep. And ask for Billy, please. Bill. Yep, and just ask him to come over. No worries, we're back in Thank you. I'm going to call in reinforcements. The last thing I want is for this snake to slip. And he's gone. I can't get him then, or it's going to be a lot harder. I'm calling Billy. Hey, mate. Have a go at him. Grab on. My arms are jelly. Thanks, mate. Jelly. They're jelly. Oh. How's it strengthen it? Yep. <laughs> Diamond pythons, these things are strong. We've got a serious fight on our hands. Oh. Strong? Yeah, man. I've got an idea, mate. I think we pour a bit of water down there. It's not going to hurt him, yep. but it might make it slippery. Might give us the advantage. Sounds good. You ready for a bit of water? Yep. OK, coming now. So I hit him with the hose, and he starts to move. And maybe now we're up to half the snakes out of the pipe. But again, he's locked in. You want to jump in again? Yes, no worries. There's a worry if we pull too hard, we could break his back, separate his vertebra. We don't want to do that. Come on. Come on. At a home next to the Australian Reptile Park, Tim and Keeper Billy are still struggling to remove a diamond python from a drain pipe. I'll give you a bit of a spray. Good. Billy is now putting water down the pipe in the hope of flushing out the stubborn intruder. It's a diamond python, which they get fairly large, up to three metres. I'm guessing that this fella's going to be two metres over. OK, he's moving. Look how big he is, kids. He just keeps coming. He's loosened up and he's coming out. Last bit. Oh, he's got a bit of skin off on his neck there. And all of a sudden the head pops out and there he is. Have a look at him. Do you think he was that big? Yeah. You did? What a battle, but we've got him. Well, that was the hardest python I have ever caught. <laughs> Diamond pythons must surely be one of the most beautiful pythons in the world. They're only found around the Sydney region and, and east coast of Australia. Now this male, he'd be out in search of a female or a feed, but the sun's come up, he needs to find somewhere to hide. He doesn't want to be out and vulnerable. He's found the pipe, picked a bad spot. Can you think of a name for him? What about Peter the Python? Peter the Python, okay, Peter the Python it is. Okay, let him go. Let's go and let him go. Come with me. Clint takes us to a beautiful spot just off to the side of his property. Beautiful forest, a nice creek, perfect diamond python habitat, and we let him go. 
Everyone have a quick pat, say see you, Pete. See you. There we go. Pete the python is happy now. He's had a stressful day, but he's out now and he's back in his natural habitat. Hey, what are you going to do if you find another snake? Go to him. Call me. <laughs> Don't you catch him. Let's go. And this week's number one. <laughs> Get excited, you. Oh, this could be the biggest scrub ever. Yeah, well, that's why your pole's that big and mine's this big. You could have yeah, told me that. That's for the tail. I'm not ready for this fight. Chris and Tim have landed at Cairns Airport. They're now on their way to Yorkies Knob to try to capture a monster female scrub python living in the roof of the local boat club. Get much to do with scrub pythons. Oh, I've had enough to do yeah. to know that they scare me. Yeah. And the teeth. Yeah. Huge. That's the thing, isn't it? They eat full-grown wallabies, swallow them whole. Known to locals as Big Mama, the legendary reptile is scaring the hell out of the lady paddlers. Scrub pythons are a bit mythical, like crocodiles. Yeah. Who's seen the biggest one? Yeah. And this could be big. Mm. The boys are on a tight schedule. They only have two days to complete their daring mission. All previous attempts to remove Big Mama have failed. In the dark, in a confined yeah. space, with a snake that's six, snake. seven metres long. Awesome. Hey, how are you? How you going? How you going? I'm Chris. At the Yorkies Knob Boat Club, Chris and Tim are met by the CEO, Stu, and one of the outrigger canoe paddlers, Sue. You tell us where the action's happening? Apparently. Wait, do we bring the right gear or what? Oh, mate, you might need Mattering. a bigger hook than that. <laughs> uh, we would hate to see something happen to her, and that's that's the priority, is to make sure she's protected. So You've seen her across here. We've seen her the width of the road. Like she goes right across. Right across. It was it's time to lift that denial and acknowledge the fact this is a very big snake. One, two. She's a monster. Three, four. And I'm in trouble. Five, oh dear, six. Right across. Right across. Tim. He's in trouble as well. He doesn't know that yet. Look at his face. You know, off the camera, all day, <laughs> I've been really psyched up. You guys take all the time in the world, and now I'm getting really psyched out <laughs> about this monstrous snake. There's a little bit of poo in Mandy's. <laughs> snake in the roof right now. Now. Check it out. We're about to see the back there. Yeah. Inside the club rooms, Chris and Tim get their first look at one of those male visitors. Oh, man, he's a, he's a little one. Serious? Yeah, that's, yeah a baby. that's an absolute baby. Yeah. There's still a handful to grab. Yeah. So his head was like that. Yeah, yeah. It's still a toy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> this is where she has her, shall we say, uh, late night meetings. Look at this. That. Mm. She does this with her men. She does this. Shall we say she's a, a popular female? She's a, maybe, maybe a socialite, a Paris Hilton of the snake world? I'm going to go up there and I'm starting to think the hook's no good because there's no way to work it into the roof, so it looks like I'm going barehanded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the reality is because she's got so big, she's become a danger to the dogs, the cats, and really the kids. Get into that next part. The really awful thing is that you put your head up through one of these holes and you're looking around and you think, I haven't checked behind me. You look around and there could be a snake right there just waiting to grab you. It's an awful feeling. Chris and Tim are on a mercy mission to Cairns to try to remove a frightening seven metre python from a local canoe club. This is like a posh hotel here. You've got all these lights, you've got hot water systems. The snakes are just sitting on top of them. They duck outside, they go to the, the supermarket, eat a fruit bat, come back in, digest the food, lay your eggs, hatch your babies. It's, it's just the perfect area for big snakes. There's snake skin everywhere. Local folklore around here says that Big Mama is seven metres long. If she really is seven metres long, she's the biggest scrub python ever recorded. Oh, Timmy. What do you got, snake? Snake skin. Skin. Big it is. Grab all of that. Oh, it's big enough. Oh, gee. I have had a bit of an up. It does put you on edge. I mean, everyone talks about the beauty of it and all those things. I'm over the beauty. Just get the snake out. 
Okay, just want to go out, train without peeing your pants, would be great. That's a big shake. Oh, Timmy? Yep. yep. You got yep. one? Yep, 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 yep. Watch him. They'll bite, mate. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Everyone that knows a little bit about snakes always says, oh, pythons, you know, you shouldn't worry about them. They're not venomous. With scrub pythons, it's different. They've got massive teeth, and when they latch on, because the teeth face backwards, you can't get the head off. They call them the pit bulls of the snake world for a reason. I got him. <sighs> He's not a big one. Jeez, look at that. <laughs> How beautiful is that? I'd say, Timmy, it's one nil. No, that's a half. Mate, this At is best. A, is this a scrub python? Yes, it is. Did I catch it? Yes, I did. It's a baby scrub one python. One nil, Timmy. One nil. The funny thing is that Chris is all cocky now. I've got a snake, mate. Wait until he sees a big one. He's going to freak. More skin. In Cairns, Chris and Tim are continuing their search for the legendary Big Mama and her harem of boyfriends. These snakes are so strong. They can constrict and have the muscle power to, to eat a wallaby and, you know, to strangle us. I reckon I can see some. A snake? Yeah, yeah. Um, go up that end. It's a monster. He yeah. should just come past me and I can grab him. Yeah. What's going through my head up there is I'm about to grab the snake and I can see its head is don't bite me, don't strangle me. They're the two most important things. Just be careful because it's facing that way. Okay. Okay. He's moving now. Okay, again. Yep, 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 yep. He's just past me. Yep. You got it. I've got a head, yep. Got it, mate. You got it? Yep. This? Yep, just take it now. More. More. Keep on going in here. Hold on, he's dead. He's dead. Feed that down. As the battle heats up, what the boys don't know is whether the snake is Big Mama or one of your boyfriends. Oh, pull this way. Yep. Oh, keep coming. He's hanging on up this end. Which way do you want me to pull? Um, grab this here. It just kept coming and coming and coming. <sighs> Big snake. Oh, jeez. Over. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at that. It could be her. It could be her, you are right? Yep, yep, yep. There's obviously a real buzz about trying to find Big Mama. But in all seriousness, the most important thing is getting her and moving her somewhere safely, because she's a once-in-a-lifetime snake. Oh, man, let's get her on the lawn. She's a monster. Stretch her right out there, Timmy. There you go. What are you at? 4.9 metres. 4.9. It's not her, fellas, I don't think. You don't reckon it's her? I don't reckon it's her. I reckon it's a bit small. <laughs> I was shattered when he said it wasn't Big Mama. They were pretty excited about it. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to tell them it was uh, definitely not her. Oh, mate, flip him over. There you go. Oh. <laughs> You're right. We've had a few of them. You are right. There you go. The little spurs here. He's come out of Big Mama's house, but it ain't Big Mama. Oh, man. <laughs> Head down. One second. One, two, three. They've still got a lot of work to go and uh, a lot of crawling around in roof spaces and looking to find it. That's it. Stinks of snake up here. Next day in Cairns, a nervous Chris and Tim have decided to climb right into Big Mama's lair in a last ditch attempt to find the monster python. Oh, it's just hot in here, just oppressively hot, you know, 35, 40 degrees and it's perfect for snakes, but geez, it's not good for people. Oh, man. Oh, it just don't fit. The boys are running out of time. Both have commitments back in Sydney and need to return home tonight. Basically, we've demolished the place. We haven't found the snake. And I think she's in there. Enough of all of this lies. Mamby Pamby, warm fuzzy stuff, just get the snake. <laughs> Thank you. I'm taking it on board. <laughs> Is this all just one big wind up? No, the girls yeah. wanted to see you. Yes, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Thank you, mate. Tim. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Um, just be kind when you tell stories about what we did here, all right? Always, always. I'm not surprised they didn't get her. Many have tried, many have failed. See you, big mama. Yeah, you won. Convincingly. It's no boat club, but it's all right. Just give me a good night.
Oh, There's one, one last back. thing for Chris and Tim to do. Release their snakes back into the wild. See you later. Look at that. All right, it's, it's, it's a bit of a difference there. And you can smell his home, a bit more lively. <laughs> it's satisfying to see that snake just take off here into the jungle. Now, away from suburbia, into the jungle, it is perfect. You know what, we didn't get Big Mama, but in a way what that allows is for this legend to live on. And that's kind of nice. See you, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Good job, Pete. Well done. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.